Welcome to the latest notes from the control tower, my occasional series on non-flying topics in World of Warplanes. And in this episode, I'm going to talk more about Wargaming's decision to leave Russia and Belarus, and also examine the preliminary statistics that we have for the new reward aircraft, the P-38L Lightning. Hello there, and without a doubt, the big news in World of Warplanes was, uh, came on the 15th of June, when we had an announcement that the CIS server was going to be shut down for the game. This, which you're looking at on the screen, is the announcement translated to, into English and posted on the EU forum. And I want to draw your attention immediately to this statement here, that it, Wargaming is assuring us that uh, the loss of the CIS server is not going to affect the NA, the EU and the Asian servers. And that perhaps isn't too surprising. CIS server um, belongs to Leicester, which has been divested from Wargaming. So it's a separate business. And I assume two things have uh, borne upon uh, Leicester's decision to shut down World of Warplanes in the CIS region. First, I understand that uh, per player, the amount spent uh, in the CIS region is rather smaller than it is in the West. Secondly, I assume that the game would have been subject to royalties and license fees, or at least one of those two things, that Leicester would have had to pay to Wargaming. And clearly somebody's crunched the numbers and decided that the game is not viable in the CIS region. So unfortunately, for uh, those playing that server in the CIS region, it's going to go. That shutdown um, is scheduled for December the 13th, 2022, which at the time of the announcement was approximately six months. And further to this, um, players of World of Warplanes in the CIS region were going to be offered some sort of chance to transfer their account to the EU region. A couple of things to talk about there. First off, it turns out that if uh, players wish to transfer their accounts to the EU region, and they have a World of Tanks account, then they're going to have to transfer both. And that, I think, is going to seriously deter a lot of Russian players who I think are likely to have both World of Warplanes and World of Tanks accounts from coming to the EU server. Of course, there will be some who will want to do it. I can imagine, for very obvious reasons, that Ukrainian players would like to transfer their accounts. So. The effect on the EU server may not be as much as we would imagine. We're not likely, in my opinion, to see a large influx of Russian players, but we will see some, and that's a good thing. Coming back to talk about the NA, EU and Asian servers, the announcement came with a note that uh, the, the closure of the CIS server doesn't affect those, and it would appear that we can believe that. First, here is a post by XPK, yeah, Eugenie Pogac, I've got that terribly wrong, who's announcing that he's going to be uh, performing the role, at least temporarily, of community manager, both on the forums, and yeah, I knew he was already active in the Discord. Um, and a key statement here, I would really appreciate your patience while we are working on finding a new dedicated community manager. Okay, and it sounds like, uh, um, Wargaming is trying to find more personnel in order to support World of Warplanes in every regard. Uh, and we can, be fa we can be fairly confident about its future, at least in the medium term, I would suggest. So that's good news. And there's more. We then, on the 28th of June, got the pleasant surprise of update 2.1.14. And clearly this means there are some development efforts going into the game. So let's have a look at this fairly quickly. Um, the new update is introducing a new supply crate. Mm, okay. Well, that turns out that supply crate is one that does not offer aircraft. So as it says, it focuses on consumables, resources within the game. I don't think they've gone on sale yet and we don't know a price for them, but since they don't offer you the opportunity to win, win aircraft, I'm assuming they're going to be a bit cheaper than some of the other crates, but there are so many crates in this game now, one, begin, one begins to lose track. I think probably of more interest to people is the fact that we're getting a new aircraft. Okay, it's another tier six American heavy. Did we need that? Not really, but it's good that anything is coming along. And this is a P-38L Lightning. 
and I'm going to talk more about that in detail later in the video, so watch out for that. Here I'll just say that it appears to have been cobbled together from bits of other aircraft. It's a Lightning. Uh, the ordnance, interestingly, is the same as the P-82B twin Mustang, at least in name. I doubt if it, the uh, uh, damage and damage radius uh, parameters will be the same. Um, the 20mm cannon has come from the XP-50, but interestingly the 15mm machine guns this aircraft carries seem to be new to the game. So clearly somebody is doing some work in the background. And we're going to be invited to get this aircraft by means of a mission marathon sometime in July, probably around Independence Day, I would guess. Um, or we can buy certificates to skip legs of uh, the missions in within that marathon. And clearly, all gaming will be hoping that you do buy certificates. Nevertheless, that was good news. More new content. Here's the announcement about the marathon doesn't say very much more than I've actually said. What really caught my eye, and I thought was most promising, is that there's some non-revenue generating work being done on the game. Here we go, other changes. The interface for missions has been optimized. Well, to be truthful, I actually hadn't noticed a difference. Um, but maybe there is, and clearly some work has been done. But the aerodynamics expert and protection expert pilot skills have been fixed. Well, who knew they were broken? Now they only improve the positive parameters of the installed equipment as intended. Well, that's good news. Um, I didn't know these were broken. But the fact that somebody has done something about this in the background, and this isn't going to generate revenue for Wargaming, has to be seen as a good thing. And additionally, the launch, the game and clear its cache data option in the Wargaming uh, uh, Game Center has been fixed. Well, I didn't know it was broken either. Um, but these are good signs. It would appear, in my opinion, that Wargaming is definitely going to commit to World of Warplanes on the NA, the EU, and the Asian server for the foreseeable future. So put out the bunting and wave your flags. This all looks promising. So, Let's turn to the next topic of this video, and after I'd recorded the preceding section, the World of Warplanes team released this article. It talks about the marathon that's coming, and it is going to start on July the 4th. Here we go. I was right. And it's going to run through to the 1st of August, so we've got plenty of time to do what is, for experienced players, a familiar chain of 25 missions that need to be completed in order to be awarded. Here we go. 25th mission, the P-38L Lightning, a hangar slot, crew, and also uh, a livery or a decoration set, as uh, the World of Warplanes team likes to call it. And in normal fashion, roughly these 25 missions will be broken into five se informal sections, and the early parts of each section will be grinds. So here we've got earn 60,000 personal points in any number of battles. You just play your battles and eventually get your 60,000 points. And the fifth mission will be an achievement of some sort. So here we have the Rocketeer. For the tenth mission, we have the Akamatsu, although we also have a Hero of the Sky badge for the ninth mission there. The fifteenth, Flying Guardian. Lambert Medal for mission 20, and then a Winged Legend for mission 24, and a Maguire, medals, a Maguire Medal for mission 25. Experienced players will have no problem achieving these missions, other than have they got enough time. Newer players may struggle, especially f with some of the achievements. For instance, this one is quite difficult to do unless you have certain fairly high tier aircraft in the game. If you don't have time or you're struggling with any of the missions, you have the option of purchasing certificates in the premium shop. And I'm going to take you straight to the secret bundle at the bottom because I think for 160 certificates, which will set you back 34 euros and 56 cents, um, this will complete all of the missions for you. If you're only struggling with certain missions, you've got uh, smaller bundles. You can buy five certificates or much less, two euros and 28, and then we can see 15, again, slightly more expensive, and then it's bundled for 75 uh, certificates for 18 uh, euros and 17 cents. So to a degree, you can mod tailor how many certificates you buy in order to complete the missions upon which you're stuck or you don't have time to complete. At least that's the idea. 
With that brief overview of the mission marathon done, let's turn our attention to the reward aircraft itself. Uh, and if we look at its page, we can see some familiar blurb, which I would urge you to take, take with a pinch of salt on how you might fly the aircraft to its maximum effect. And then we have its configuration, so engine airframe, and this airframe is the same as the P-38J's top airframe, by the way. Guns, bombs, and then specifications. Um, straight away, you need to be a little bit careful with these figures. The survivability is 11, I don't think it is. And equally, the altitude performance is listed as 71, and I don't think that's right either. So I have a spreadsheet. And let's have a look at what uh, I've been able to glean. Many of you will be familiar with this type of spreadsheet from any of my full reviews of aircraft in the game. I always explain in those full reviews how uh, this spreadsheet works. So if you don't know, pick off the section in any of those videos and you'll get an explanation. Let's dive straight into it. Uh, let's look at uh, the P-38L Lightning, which is in column C and D. Gun armament. And it's second worst in class, I'm afraid. If we just go scroll down here, you can see that. It's rated at 20. And the cumulative DPS I've calculated, given the figures that I've got for these two weapons groups here, at 345. Well, there's a disparity here straight away. Some of you may not know there's an applications programming interface for World of Warplanes. That has this as 393. Oh, I can't for the life of me see why. So I'm going to assume it is 345. And the only aircraft with less hitting power amongst the heavies at tier 6 is the Grumman XP-50. So... On the specifications page for this aircraft, it says it's a hard hitting weaponry or something to that effect. Well, no, it's not really. This is not going to cut it as an air superiority fighter if this is the armament. What have we got? We've got a 20 millimeter cannon. It's the same as mounted on the Grumman XP-50. And the statistics are exactly the same. Very good dispersion angle and auto not so good auto aim angle. Range of 2300 feet or thereabouts. Rate of fire 400 and DPS of 90. The difference is the overheat time got an extra two seconds apparently well that's going to be handy to compensate for the fact you've only got one of these cannons as opposed to two of them uh, with respect to the grum uh, we've, we've also got what are apparently new guns in the game as far as i can tell uh 315 millimeter uh, machine guns each doing 85 dps rate of fire 450 again the range 2300 again the dispersion angle excellent for machine guns but the auto-aim angle uh, slightly disappointing too. So this aircraft is going to struggle in the pure air superiority role. On the other hand, when it comes to the ordnance, the rating is 33, assuming it's correct, and it's the best in class. But there's a critical piece of information that I don't have and I can't find anywhere at the moment. So we've got two... 500 pound bombs, which is the same as the P-38J Lightning, and indeed very similar to the two mosquitoes over here. And the damage, um, cumulative damage of those bombs, 8,600 is th the same for all four aircraft. Where this aircraft scores is the 14 five inch uh, rockets, as opposed to just 10 on the P-38J Lightning, giving it 16,800 uh, cumulative damage. However, the question arises, is this just a superior mosquito with slightly inferior armament? I can't tell. And the reason being is we don't know the resupply times on either the bombs or the rockets. Now, I'm going to stick my neck out and suggest that they're probably going to be the same as the P-38J Lightning. 180 seconds for the bombs, 240 for the rockets. In which case, whilst this has a lot of damage potential, once you've expended it, you're going to have to wait a long time before you can do it again. And that limits your options with this aircraft. If, however, the resupply times have been modified and made less, and if they're approaching, for instance, the 120, excellent 120 seconds of the two Mosquitoes, this aircraft will replace the Mosquitoes as the hybrid heavy stroke ground attacker of choice. So we'll have to wait and see. And it's a critical question because on this re these two resupply times hangs the decision as to whether this aircraft is strong or potentially slightly overpowered.
Survivability, this is rated at 11 on the specifications page. Well, it's actually got fewer hit points than the P38J Lightning. I've had to guess at the damage resistance and fire resistance. Typically, the heavies tend to have very similar figures for these, so I've opted to suggest it's going to have the same as the P38J Lightning. Well, in that case, it can't be a stronger aircraft than the P38J Lightning. And therefore, I think the rating is more likely to be an 8. Basically, this is a fairly fragile heavy. When it comes to airspeed, the rating is 55. And I think here, the interesting thing is the dive speed. Apparently, it's going to be more than the P-38J Lightning. So you're going to be able to use that ordinance in a fairly steep, fairly fast dive. And this might provide you with an escape method from all of the other heavies, except the Volte, of course, which is equally fast in the dive. Boost duration, 25 seconds on the low side for heavy, but then many of the other uh, heavies have 25 seconds as well. I'm not quite sure about the cruise speed at the moment, so I can't uh, tell you how fast you're going to get between sectors when you're not using your boost. My guess is it won't be very much different from the P-38J Lightning, so something around about 310 is likely here. Maneuverability, well... Since it's carrying extra ordnance, um, you won't be surprised that it's very slightly worse than the P-38J Lightning. Uh, one of the things we don't have is the minimum optimum speed, but I guess, again, it's going to be a similar to the P-38J Lightning. I'm suspicious about this th figure of 313 here. I don't think that's going to be right, uh, and I think it's probably going to be something like 390 or thereabouts. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. 360 degree turn rate is 0.1 of a second less than the P38J. Critically, you're not going to be out turning Voltees, and indeed you won't out turn the KI-102s, um, and you're going to struggle against the Grumman XP50s as well. So be careful, pick your fights, especially as in all but one case, that of the Grumman XP50, you're not going to have the armament to shoot your way out of trouble compared to another heavy. And we come to the altitude performance. And again, it's rated at 71 on the website. Well, I've actually noticed that this one is rated as 71 as well. So I know that the 71 is going to translate into 61 in the game. We do know that the optimum, maximum optimum altitude is 7,218 feet, exactly the same as the P-38A Lightning. I'm guessing, therefore, that the ceiling will be the same, although I don't know for sure. And the climb rate is ever so slightly less than the P-38J Lightning, again, I suppose, reflecting those rockets. But it is a pretty good climb rate, the only air aircraft from which you will not escape by climbing, gradually, is the Grumman XP-50, or indeed another uh, a P-38J Lightning. So if we just drop down and see if there's anything that we can see from the worst-in-class figures, We've already talked about the armament being second worst in class, and I think the survivability is on a par with the P-38J Lightning, so that's going to be uh, pretty poor as well. Try not to get shot. Boost speed, well, lots of the air, um, heavies have 25 seconds, so that's not too uh, important. There's some information missing here for the maneuverability. Basically, it's not quite as mobile as the P-38J Lightning. And then the altitude performance, uh, no um, qualms there this is a very good performer in terms of altitude i think the most interesting characteristic that i've spotted there apart from the ones that are missing is the dive speed if that's correct then utilize it use that as your escape method for when you're uh, set upon from behind by almost anything so where does this leave this aircraft well a little bit difficult to say at the moment. We won't really know until we know these um, resupply figures. And I will see if I can track them down somewhere. So far, I've drawn a blank. They're not in the API, not so far as I can tell. And they're certainly not published on the website. Uh, and until we have these, it's going to be hard to say. But so this aircraft is either going to be pretty good at ground attacking or very good at ground attacking, so much so that it will make the mosquitoes very nearly redundant. As an air superiority heavy, it's going to struggle because it's relatively lightly armed. Will it be overpowered? I'm going to guess no, but the possibility is still there. And that brings me to the end of this episode of Notes from the Control Tower. And to sum up, the immediate future, in the medium term at least, of World of Warplanes in the Western Asia looks secure. Wargaming is clearly making efforts to secure personnel to keep the game running. That's good news. And indeed, they're introducing new content. A model of the P-38L Lightning is turning slowly behind my head. 
be chopping my head off occasionally. Um, and also I've just noticed that the spinners are missing off the propellers, but uh, there you go. This aircraft, it's a little bit early to say where it's going to fit into the game. My suspicion is that it's not going to be overpowered, but until we know the supply times on the ordnance or resupply times, we won't be entirely sure. As far as the marathon is concerned, experienced players will have no problem completing the missions provided they have time. And new players may struggle with some of the achievements, in which case you do have the option of buying some certificates in order to skip missions you're stuck on. Well, I hope you found that helpful and that if you did, you'll come and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q signing out.